One of the bigger leaks that newer poker players especially have is simply defending far too tight from the big blind, and GTO solvers have made this completely, completely obvious. If you're currently overfolding the big blind, this is the video you want to watch in its entirety. Let's get into it. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit, and today we're gonna to talk about the big blind and really making sure that we're continuing often enough when facing a raise and having to defend from the big blind specifically. Now, like I mentioned at the top, one of the most common leaks, especially for newer players, is simply being way too tight from the big blind. And it doesn't help that for a large chunk of online poker's existence, players have been actively encouraged to be tight from the big blind, fold often, and don't defend too, too wide, don't put in a lot of hands in your out of position range. And to some extent, that makes sense. So much so that if you look at the strategy that was coming out, say, before 2010, it was very common for players to suggest folding hands like even King Jack offsuit from the big blind against a three big blind open from the button. Players at the time would be quick to cite that, hey, you'd be out of position going post flop, and of course, King Jack offsuit could easily be dominated by better hands in your opponent's open raising range. Now, in the modern age of poker strategy, this seems completely ridiculous, and solvers have shown us that it is completely correct to defend the big blind extremely extremely wide when facing an open, perhaps counterintuitively wide. So let's actually look at a range together. This is coming from the Red Chip Poker app. This is looking at a six max situation where again, button open raises to 2.5x and we're in the big blind. And this is what the solver says we should be doing. The three bets are in red, the calls are in blue. And notice that this overall is a 44% continuance range. That's what we're defending with. The other 56% of course is gonna be folds, but that's a lot of continuance. And of course, well, most players nowadays aren't really gonna be making the mistake of folding king jack even offsuit here they're still going to be short of the required defending frequency by quite a margin most players and even you watching this might not be anywhere near 44 percent defense here and if at this point you're looking at this and you're like okay that's cool what the gto ranges are but i don't play in a game that requires that right i play small live cash games or i play micro stakes online totally totally fair however what you should really understand is that it should be correct to defend even wider if your opponents are even worse right so if the button is a weaker opponent, you should actually be continuing more than just 44% of the time. A lot of players do that inverse. All of a sudden, weaker opponents, they start continuing much, much tighter. That's actually almost certainly going to be wrong. Now, with all that being said, there's of course a lot of nuance and many things to consider, but one of the biggest considerations that oftentimes gets massively overlooked is the size of the raise you're facing when defending from the big blind. A lot of players in general will assume that the size your opponent uses, assuming it's not overly large or anything, isn't going to make a big difference. But the truth of the matter is, is that once you slide that size, say from a min raise that you're facing from the big blind to, let's just say 3x, all of a sudden you notice that there's some pretty big differences in the way that the solver would defend spots like this. So let's start by looking at the defense output when we're looking at a big blind defense against the button open raise. And we're going to scale that RFI size all the way from two big blinds, so a min raise from the button, all the way up to three big blinds. And notice that when we're looking at, again, 2.25 big blinds and two and a half big blinds, when we scale through those things, we notice the folding frequency changes pretty darn massively, right? Against the min raise, we should be folding from the big blind 36% of the time, but against a three big blind open, all of a sudden that's almost two thirds. Now, interestingly, the three bet frequency is gonna remain fairly similar across all the sizes. At two big blinds, we should be three betting at a 12% frequency. Against a three big blind open, all of a sudden that's up to 14%, and then 13% between those two numbers for the different sizes, which means, of course, that if the folding is changing, that all the extra hands that are getting included when we're looking at the smaller open raise size from the button are going to be jammed in to calls, right? Calling against the min raise from the big blind against a button min raise is 52%. Over half of hands should be getting called here. Contrast that to the three big blind open, all of a sudden that's down to 19%. Now we could just look at the big blind versus button, but steals are a little bit different than other situations. So let's say instead of it being the button open raising, we look at the low jack open raising, and again, still look at our defense from the big blind, assuming everyone folds to us. And if we keep those exact same RFI sizes in mind, again, ranging from the min raise up to a three big blind open. We notice that the folding frequency against the min raise is 60%, but the folding frequency against the three big blind is 82%, which is much, much higher than the two thirds that was coming when, again, it was the big blind versus button formation. We also notice that the three bet frequency is going to be very similar, scaling between five and 6%, again, across all those sizes, which of course means that against the larger open raise size, we are calling significantly less versus 
hands against the min raise, 35% of hands are being called from the big blind against the low jack min raise. So just comparing these two formations overall, two major things should poke out. One, against the smaller raise sizes, we should definitely be folding a lot less and folding a lot more against the larger raise sizes, even though we're just talking about literally looking at the difference between a single big blind and raise size. And then the other thing is that three bet frequencies remain fairly static, so that continuance is going to be modified mostly through the calling ranges. In general, most players are pretty surprised with just how wide they're supposed to defend against min raises, even from earlier positions, right? So in the situation where it's big blind versus the under the gun opener, Hero should still be defending about 35% of the time against a min raise from under the gun. That's probably a lot wider than you ever would have thought. Now, here's the thing. If you are brand new to poker, extremely, extremely green, you really don't have much of a clue on what the heck to do post-flop. I understand playing tighter pre-flop from the big blind makes a lot of sense, keeps you out of a lot of trouble, and keeps you from just absolutely hemorrhaging stacks post-flop. I get it. Now that being said, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not a pure, pure beginner. Most pure, pure beginners, people very, very, very new to the game, don't find themselves on this channel. So chances are, if you're playing way too tight from the big blind right this moment, you haven't updated the original strategy you put in mind to keep yourself from hemorrhaging stacks post-flop, which again was to get much, much tighter from the big blind in the first place early on in your poker career. Makes sense, but at this point, it might be time to start updating that and defending more properly and getting away from being way too tight from the big blind. I assure you it makes you a huge target for any opponent who's paying attention who's just trying to steal your big blind relentlessly if you're constantly, constantly overfolding. Now if post-flop still makes you nervous in these spots or you're not really sure what you should be three betting from the big blind in these situations either, I would highly suggest checking out my new book GTO Gems 2. It goes through all sorts of spots just like this, gives you tons of advice for playing spots as the defender post-flop, playing marginal situations, vulnerable spots, talking about GTO from a pre-flop and post-flop point of view. If you want to get deeper in this and really prepare your strategy for handling this spot, both when you three bet it and when you defend by calling, I would highly suggest checking that out, gtogems.com slash two, or look for GTO Poker Gems 2 on Amazon if you're looking for the paperback. But just in general, hopefully this video helps you put some profitable modifications into your prefob strategy from the big blind. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.